The word mutation often carries a negative undertone, as you may think about all sorts of genetic disorders. However, mutations are not always as bad as you might presume. In fact, everyone carries countless mutations that lead to slightly different proteins, which is one of the reasons why every individual is unique. Therefore, we would rather refer to these changes in the genome as genetic variants. Most genetic variants are harmless and are found frequently in the general population. Those genetic variants are also referred to as polymorphisms. However, some genetic variants are harmful and may cause disease. Genetic variants are differences in the genetic sequence of an individual compared to the consensus sequence in most other individuals, which is also known as the reference genome. Genetic variants come in different lengths, sometimes just a single nucleotide, and sometimes bigger stretches of DNA. There are two main causes that give rise to genetic variants. First, they may arise spontaneously. Every time a cell divides, billions of nucleotides need to be copied, and mistakes inevitably happen. Second, changes in the genome can be caused by external influences that damage the DNA, such as certain chemicals or UV radiation. Fortunately, most mistakes in our DNA are rapidly repaired. The repair system is not foolproof, however, and some genetic changes remain. These are especially problematic in germ cells, as these genetic variants will be present in almost all cells that are derived from them. So when is a genetic variant harmful, and when is it not? By now, we know that our genome holds important information for all biological processes to enable the production of RNA molecules and proteins. This information is encoded in specific sequences, which genetic variants may disrupt. Let's take a look at some examples of how this happens. If the variant is located in the regulatory region of a gene, for example the promoter, gene transcription could be affected. As a consequence, the amount of mRNA and protein that is produced will be changed. If the variant is located at the splice sites, incorrect splicing may occur, causing alternative mRNA products and thus malfunctioning proteins to be made. If a variant is located within an exon, the translation of the mRNA into a polypeptide could be different, creating an altered protein. In contrast, a genetic variant may have a very limited consequence for a gene. For instance, when it's located deep in an intron or outside any important functional element in the genome. The effect size that a variant has on the function of a gene thus varies and can be seen as a continuum, where one genetic variant has a bigger biological consequence than another. For example, a variant that results in a completely unusable protein has a larger biological effect than a variant that only slightly reduces gene expression. Fortunately, we carry more variants with smaller effects than harmful genetic variants with big effect sizes. If we plot all genetic variants based on their effect size and the frequency in which they are encountered in the general population, we can roughly observe a negative relationship between them. We will further elaborate on this graph in the next videos, where we talk about how genetic variants are involved in different genetic diseases. For now, be aware that genetic variants have different biological effects and sometimes result in severe disease as they affect important sequences in the genome.